Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knights here, and we have an abomination of a gun. Womp 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 womp. Nah, just joking, I'm uh... I was, I was fiddling around with extra gear I have, like uh... Mythic's old uh... ACOG green fiber. Oh, you can see the honeycomb on the camera, that's weird. I don't like that. Favorite little hand cannon that I never use, but... It glows in the dark! So! It's been a while since we've done our 2018, uh, or 2018 gear updates or videos, and gear has been updating at a pretty sufficient rate, I would say, honestly. Moving, trying out this, trying out that, this works really well, don't really, yeah, this is alright. Move from here to there and whatnot, and we still have our Glock 42. Because the good tonight, A, mostly doesn't use handguns, and two, really, at some point, needs to get his Glock 17 to fill out this holster so I could go ka -chunk. Ka chunk Do the ka chunk ka chunk damn you! Then you get the general idea. Let me do it. I'm right-handed. There we go. But there's no Glock 17 in here at the moment. Womp womp. But yeah, so we've got our Glock 42, which is honestly more than we're probably really gonna need. We're using a concealment handgun as a uh, front lines handgun. It is tiny though, it's easy to use. And it doesn't overcompensate. So, what's our gear review consist of today? Well, let's start with the most important part. Plate carrier is still the LBT 6094. 20... Damn, 2014 model. Bought this one a while ago. So yeah, we've still got our cries. Sexy, sexy cries in green. We might do a mixed color sort of setup, starting getting tans and blacks going in. Yep, take that. Move this to here and boom. Okay, so the main other thing is we've gone back to the same uh, uh, little shingles I sold a uh, juice box. The Warrior Salt Systems. This is a uh, different one. Juice box still has his. Fear not. I have not taken things from juice box. We've got this here and it is nice. The bungees are okay. I do like how they have this little adaptive here thing that I can put them on the like corner so they're easy to pop off and get a magazine out. But our goal is to get the, we're going to talk about what we have now and what our continued updates are because gear updates never really stop. Otherwise we'd be, <laughs> dude, that is why people are Slavaboos. The uh, Russian fucking war gear hasn't changed since the Cold War, whereas US stuff gets more expensive and you can't pass it on generation to generation. So we have our melee weapon here, our MRE spoon, so we can get some MRE spoon kills. Normal life hack and stuff, but yeah, the bungees are okay. I want to get the S Tac Kiwi inserts because it's a little piece of like Crydax. You're like, well, good sir, night. Isn't that just like diet tacos? And um, that's true enough, but that doesn't mean you should say it. All right, stop. I want to take the bungees off. I'm gonna put the little Crydax inserts so I can do the little clinky clink tactical reloads when I'm not doing the oh fuck reloads. So. And I can always just leave the bungee off. It's got decent retention for not having a Crydex, but not the sort of... I mean, these are light airsoft magazines. They're actual loaded magazines at a pound and jumping would send them flying, but currently okay. We only got three mags because I... I can actually shoot decent is the first part. The other thing is uh, we can always have more mags on the field. And you can swap them out as things go on, so on and so forth have basically like combat pogues running around with magazines for people who are doing the real operating. Oh boy. Anyway, so we got our magazines. We don't need too many. Three is nice because it keeps LO profile. We're a very high speed low drag right now. IFAC is still minimalistic in our uh, HSGI bleed out pouch. And our tourniquet's back here because I can reach it with both hands. Most important thing. And I like having the tourniquet out of the way. So there you go. I could actually probably swap the tourniquet and the uh, pouch, I thought about it, but it does mildly hinder the gun draw. So, I don't know, might move the IFAC here to a uh, belt mounted piece or something. But yeah, we've got um, continued updates. We do have our twin needle uh, mini mat back here. That'll hold any rain gear, mission essential items, but predominantly it's going to hold our air tank for our Polar Star. Because if you have a Polar Star, you always need to be shooting full auto in high capacity magazines, and uh, you know, always make sure you're over the jewel limit, make sure you're always shooting hot, and uh, be a dick to everyone. <laughs> that's, that's just the official rules. It comes, it comes with a sheet of paper that tells you to do exactly that, but nah. 
I've got it set to burst, and yeah, it shoots perfectly fine. I might try a heavier BBs. I'm gonna have to do some of a uh, some fine tuning to make that work. But I'll probably try 25s. I've been using 20s because BB speed is slightly faster. But having a slightly more accurate BB, especially at range for engaging at range, probably not a bad idea. I like being close because I did do a few years of martial arts. But uh, the closer you get to people in both firearms and martial arts, the more they're. Uh, Whoever is on the attacking side has a huge advantage because the defender is like, he's not supposed to be this close, what do I do? Mentality. Anyway, we have our handgun, Safari Lands. All Safari Lands. And it's on our, currently mounted directly to our belt. One of the goals here is to get the uh, M-Dom, a little tactical fanny. Makes it a little... Actually, has a fun little dip in it to keep it from shaking around and rattling, but we're going to get the M-Dom. Well, good tonight, what do you need an M-Dom for? Well... I want it. <laughs> There's um, it's not more IRL wise. It's a nice thing to have. You can put lock picks, which you shouldn't be breaking anyone's house. You can keep lock picks. You can keep bomb diffusal kits for your EOD sort of guys. Multi tools, really anything and everything your heart desires. We've also got a little. Oh, who makes the tactical tailor makes a little admin pouch. What do we need an admin pouch for? Again, fill it with candy, candy bars, chocolate. Random knickknacks, maps, pictures, commands, fun little stuff like that that's useful to have on you. But for the case of Airsoft, I might just leave it off the kit for actual games and use as more of a aesthetically pleasing, where are we stuck in a field sort of setup. But yeah, the other great thing with the fanny pack though is I can throw extra magazines in there. Which is one of the things I'm learning. Like I went from six mags to three mags. And one of the big things is I've got side pockets I can put extra mags in. I've got cargo pockets I can throw extra mags in. And with the fanny pack, that's an even other extra two mags. So you can carry a ton of mags with relative ease. You just need a couple fast mags and everything else is a sort of a backup. In addition, you're probably not gonna need all that mags to begin with. And in a, well, more grim scenario, if you are in the event of losing people for whatever reason, then you still have more mags that they would probably prefer you to have if they're not able to engage in the fight. So, always things to consider. Blake here is super comfortable, and since we have been slimming it down a bit, I've moved the radio out from the side it was over here because I do have that internal pocket that I can throw, um, you know, my radio in connected here. The radio is still here. I do have it still in the pouch for, you know, reasons, but I can just take it out of here, dump it in there, clip this back onto here, Gotta hate that word. And then plug in the sword ends and we're good to go. One of the things we're waiting for, sword ends wise, is we're waiting for the Sarah and Mark kit adapters so I can go through the painstaking process of taking these apart, remounting and redoing everything, and then being able to wear them connected directly to the helmet because, oh my god, wearing these things under a helmet is probably one of the worst things in the world. They do make the behind the neck version, but I'm not about to shell out a bunch of money, I'd rather modify these ones and get a uh, sexy little setup, like so. So, that's more or less we do have our two frag grenades here. I'm probably not going to be throwing them myself because I prefer to have more trigger time with the pew pew, but it is a good option to be able to toss these to a teammate and be like, hey, don't lose the pin. We've also moved away from the dump pouch. Now, I've not nothing personal against dump pouches, although in most games a dump pouch it is still a hit, which is frustrating. but. Slim me down to three mags, not carrying any, well, I could carry an extra pistol mag in a pocket, but again, that's stuff I can dump in pockets when not in use in a lull in combat, so we don't have too many problems to worry about. I'm just making sure I can still do that, and there's no point in me drawing a handgun right now, although this thing is a tiny little beauty. But yeah, so we don't have too many things, to, we're not going to be losing too many mags, we can get the Crydex things, we're going to to retain our mags up in here, up in here. So yeah, we got some frags. Our frags are still our standard cyclones, grenades. I'll probably put like happy face drawings or something on them later. Two of those, just to ensure that people trying to hide behind bunkers and do camping tactics will be met with an unfortunate fate hunting them. And yeah, then you know, just a normal pack on the back. So that's all pretty standard. Helmet wise, we've made significant <laughs> leaps and bounds. We're not at the point of an ops core ballistic fast XP helmet just yet, but we do have the Opscore Carbon Fiber, which on another hand, 
It's not gonna stop bullets or anything, but being carbon fiber, this thing literally weighs about as much as three or four sheets of paper. Like normal college ruled paper. Weighs nothing. Super cool, super lightweight, super breathable. And we've got a helmet cover on the way that'll match the Ranger green here. But yeah, we go ahead. We can uh, don this on our dome piece and keep our grape safe. It's already been fine tuned to fit on my face. And what we're gonna do from here, how you know, far can't get away from the camera, is we have our Googles. We're gonna get the Googles attached back here with a little 36 millimeter rail. A little something waiting on the procurement of a friend of mine. But yeah, we got our goggles. Right now they're just gonna mount onto the helmet like so. I'm gonna put them on. Oh, oh good, they fit at a weird angle. Thanks, that's what I wanted. Yeah, with the actual mounts, they're gonna fit a bit better. That's not too bad. The other big thing we have is I've modified, oh boy, I'm gonna have to crouch. This is fun. I'm gonna have modified my mask with the clips here. So we can just go ahead, find that port there. Now when we do got the swordens working, this isn't really gonna be a big issue because this is gonna fit over the swordens just fine. Yeah, there's space here in the ear for the sword as we can run this all through that. But yeah, we do have our mask, and the mask does clip into place so that we're not losing teeth and looking like a goober. So there you go, we have our combat headgear. Teeth are safe, our ears are... Ears are a little exposed without the uh, covers, but we're fine. We could also... I might opt to get the... whatchamacallit... little side armor, cheap plastic Chinese knockoff. Just so we look okay. So, we've got really good face and head protection. Everything's mounted onto a single piece, so I can take it, don and doff it. Doff is a word. With relative ease, and we've got our P-Star of Fun. Mind you, we're also gonna mount the camera on the right side here. Probably, as it is right now, we'll just mount it on the rail, but once we get the sword ends up and running, we'll be mounting it back to a sword's mount. And then, of course, we've got our fun little P-Star. We've got the suppressor back on there, because Slightly quieter operations is fun, so we can surprise the hell out of people when we're going through. Still got our red dot, standard lens protector, and we got our laser flashlight combo. So we can see, we can go blind people. It's a decent light for what it is, all things considering. I do like it. I mostly like the tail here, but in a worst case scenario, we do also have our stream light in case we do to go full NVGs, as Mythic has advised. We can go ahead and we can mount this back onto the side of a peck box and we can have an actual IR laser, IR flow light peck box and we'll be able to see and shoot things. But this is the super frustrating, annoying, seizure inducing strobe, which is great for night games as long as you, well, don't give anyone an actual epileptic seizure. So, we got our gear, we can move this off to the side nicely, got our handgun so we can do CQB engagements. And without radios, everything's pretty light and uh, very streamlined. Adding the radios does add the extra bit of bulk. It adds the sword in. The swords will improve hearing as well as communications with the team, but not an immediate necess necessity because I have everyone on the team. Only uh, our Demon of Ogimi Redbeard friend actually is using comms. So it mostly comes down to, uh, well, just me. And with only me on comms, talking to myself and possibly listening to some radio music, Hey, you know, it's whatever. I've got my gloves back here. They're not on right now, but always wear gloves. Just get that out there. One thing that sucks more than getting hit in the tooth is getting hit in the finger. Especially, the main thing you're really protecting yourself is even with Japanese rules, no Japanese gun within reason is going to knock out your tooth unless you're nasty, heavy smoker, never brush your teeth. But that aside, your main concern is someone might have a hot gun, and if you got a BB wedged into your mask, like just breaking out the steel pieces and everything, then, well, A, you didn't lose a tooth, and B, you should probably figure out who's shooting hot, because that is uh, very bad, and you could be like, safety violator, get off my range. And, you know, pump this like a shotgun, which it is not. And we, I mean, we could also replace it with a little grip here. I'm just using this as a hand stop, because this is more or less where I like to keep my hand, and it makes it really easy to get to the uh, beep, beep, beep light here, so. The light that I never use. I mean, you know, it's a nice option to have. Red dot, everything's gonna be mostly close quarters. So yeah, we've got a decent setup. I might loosen the sling a bit, just to uh, make the left-handed transitions a bit easier. Oh good, oh good, the mask doesn't do anything too crazy. And the mask is the side, so that works just fine, so. 
kind of decent setup. We've got fantastic. I actually look pretty good. I should make it. I should pose for a nice picture here. Just get a nice little. Uh, yeah, there we go. America. I get the little the suppressor in the corner there. Yeah. Get one from the side. Oh yeah. Don't mind me. But yeah, so we've got a decent setup going on. Lipo little battery sits back here. Polar star connects to the hose. And then we go forth and we have jolly good times. So I'm also just free up this hand. Oh, there we go. I'm probably going to be having it just over the neck on the sling anyway, because that's really easy to work with. And if I had to do any maneuvering or movements, then I could always move it like so. Oh yes, let's go play way too much Metal Gear together. <laughs> uh, I hate video games, always skipping out on the slings. It's like, oh yeah, your gun just magically teleports straight back and you can move it freely like it's not even attached to your body any other time. It doesn't take long to take this on and off. And in most CQB situations, if you run into a situation where someone's off on the side and you can't transfer your weapon that far, then handgun. Handgun is your super short savior sort of device. So you got a lot of cool things gear-wise going on. Small, small improvements. Stuff to uh, help you save some money. And I'm going to show you why I like this so much. I can go over here, find that tab, hit the tab, and then... Take off everything in one fell swoop. Yeah. But yeah, we'll be getting back into Swordens here in the near future once that kit and stuff all comes together. Now, I do still have the uh, plates in here. I might try finding some type of soft armor. Oh, yeah, you can see where the swimmer cut doesn't work out. If you got muscle, that's a lot more noticeable. Ha! So, we've got our plates in here. We'll have a uh, Probably try to get soft armor because it's lighter. It's less protection from rifle rounds, but again, we're doing airsoft right now, so not a problem. And I do think the soft armor is one of the big things that makes the difference in a plate carrier because it covers all those small areas, like your sides here, that you don't necessarily want plates on, but you may require plates. Wow, I am nice and sweaty. We're looking at 70 minutes. Oh, wow. I am a chatterbox today. These pockets are so comfortable. That's why the uh, Marine Corps doesn't let you keep your hands in them. If you're ever wondering, I thought Marine Corps pockets were comfy once your cami start feeling like uh, pajamas, but oh my god. Cry. Mr. Cry? I can't remember his first name. I know someone who does know it, but I don't know it, but fantastic pockets. Damn, those are comfy. These are just comfy pants in general. Really can't go wrong. Pretty expensive, but comfy pants. But yeah, I do feel a lot lighter. Things are a lot more streamlined. And as we continue to get rid of the excess fat, really cut the fat out of both the gear and the individual, we're going to see more noticeable improvements. I got to get my runtime back together. But yeah, so the other thing I wanted to cover before we run out of time here today is I have two very close friends of mine coming back. Well, one's already been here. We knew everyone knows Juicebox. He's been away for a few months. He'll be back and we'll go be going pew 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 pew. But I also got a good buddy from the Marine Corps who's also coming back to Okinawa for his first time in like three, four some odd years. He's a great guy. You guys will all get to meet him. And uh, yeah, he'll be joining me for some pew pew shenanigans. And we'll all have a jolly good time. So yeah, hope everyone's having a good time. I'm doing pretty well. Sleepy. Transferring to go do greater things in other places. Still in Okinawa, but you know, you get the idea. So yeah, significant upgrades, particularly the op score. Oh my god, the comparison between real op score and FMA is beyond night and day. So hopefully everyone's doing well. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the video up. Just wanted to kind of showcase all the fun, cool stuff we're doing, the nice upgrades, and the fact that I can now maneuver and do little angles and crazy stuff because there's less gear in the way. So cheers, stay chivalrous. I'll see you all in the next video. This is a recording.